congratulations on the marathon. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. You're amazing. This is your second marathon. Second marathon at first, 22 months. First one at nine months, second one at 22 months from surgery. Yep. Wow. You know, you are um, teaching me what's possible after this procedure. And, and not just me, but the entire osseointegration community. Um, you know, I was just at a meeting. I was in North Carolina over the weekend, and um, you know, I, I gave actually a lecture on tibial osseointegration, and I showed your case as an example of what's possible. And all the experts and all the surgeons were like, oh, "Wow, you know, like that. It's amazing that that is what is possible." So, we surgeons are learning from our patients, and you are the you're the poster guy for that. I mean, you're teaching us what is possible. So 22 months since since your osteointegration surgery. Yeah. So sometimes this is a great time to kind of hear some perspective. You know, you lived as an amputee for how long? Since uh, since 2020 to 2023 beginning. So three years. So three years you lived as an amputee yep. using socket, and yep. then now it's almost two years. Uh, with osteointegration limb replacement. So I think you have some great perspective and I'm always, I, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Tell me what this has been like for you. Uh, this has been surreal. I mean, ever since having a socket, you know, I got the amputation as my, you know, exhausting of all my options prior to amputation. I exhausted every bit of it. Amputation was that next step. You know, I went into it thinking that, you know, this wasn't going to change my entire life, but it was going to get me to the next step further trying to find my overall health. You know, because I have residual scarring in my in my, in my my nub, I did have a lot of uh, skin breakdown and skin irritation with my socket on. I had a lot of rubbing on my common peroneal nerve because my fibula head and my common peroneal nerve goes over the top of the fibula head. And then I would have the socket right here, so it would just squeeze on that nerve and I wouldn't try to do anything active. Running was a no-go. Um, so that's why I cut the holes in the size of the sockets which any prosthetist would never do. That's half, that's, you gotta do that on your own. But yeah, I just had a lot of issues with the socket itself. More times I was, I was not wearing it. I'd rather be on crutches or just hopping around than actually wearing my socket and prosthetic. So it had, it created that much discomfort for you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Could you run? No, I'd probably run about a quarter mile, but because my, Probably the biggest issue was my inconsistency with size. Between 12 to 18 months, my process told me that I would find my fit with my socket. That never happened. Because of the surgery I needed on my knee six months after my amputation, I had so much swelling and inconsistency that I would start out the day with like a one ply sock and end with a 14 ply sock. And it would just, there would be differences all throughout the day. So when you were wearing a socket for those three yeah. years, how like how long does it take to don and doff the the leg? About two minutes. You know, first you gotta take the socket off, but then you have all the different ply socks, and then you take off your your liner, which for me all the time because of all those socks, um, it'd be sweaty. Right. I'd have to you know dry off all my sweat, put my socket back or my liner back on exactly perfect. I had the pin and lock system for my prosthetic, so right. I had to get that perfect pin in line. Then I put all my socks back on, get my leg socket back on. So yeah, roughly two to yeah. two and a half minutes. And how long does it take to pop the leg on with the osseum? Five to 10 seconds. Yeah. Just a quick out, throw another leg on, go. That's amazing. Very easy. Yeah. All you need is a five millimeter hex head metric. You know, the, the, um, you know, the, the fact that you've done marathons now it kind of like is, is so amazing. But tell me about your like daily life. Like, uh, what kind of an impact has this made for you in the course of like just a regular day? This is everything. I mean, with with my current job right now, this attire is my is my workwear. So, no one knows that I'm an amputee. The way I walk, the way my gait is, the way my just my function as a, as a whole is. You have no idea until you ask me about me. Right. And I'll tell you about my amputation and my story. Right. But without that. I'm just a six eight guy walking. <laughs> you, you, you notice the height, but you don't notice anything else. A good looking six eight guy walking. Tough life. All right, let me ask you. And here's one more question for you, because I'm very into this with my patients. Um, what's this done for your head? 
Mentally, it's been everything. Um, I've had all sorts of addictions throughout this past 10 years of, of medical, um, a lot of depression, a lot of suicidal thoughts, and just, just tough, tough parts of life. With osteointegration, I'm not really an amputee, as weird as that sounds. But even with shorts on and you can see the whole leg, people don't see me as an amputee because I don't walk bad. I have perfect mechanics. A lot of time and effort has went into that, but it's amazing. So mentally, I walk out of the door knowing that I'm just another guy. And that is huge for me because, you know, everyone has got their own opinion. Everyone kind of looks at you a different way when you do have a struggle, when you do see a socket and you are limping. But when you don't have any of that and you're walking great, then they're like questioning, how is he doing that? And I eat that up. I love that. Because it all goes down to your work I put in, seeing you, what you've done for me, everything. That's amazing. That's amazing. You know, what you're what you're what I'm hearing is that it feels like your leg. It's the next best thing to Yeah. You know, your leg. And uh, it feels like your leg, so you feel whole. Yeah. And so that translates into not only the way you walk and the way you the way you mobilize, but into who you are as a person and you feel more normal. Absolutely. Everybody wants to feel normal. We all want to feel normal. And in a way, because the socket, or because the implant is directly into your tibia, and now you have a direct... Uh, Skeletal connection. You kind of, in a way, feel the ground. Yeah. It's really weird. But like, and what I like to do, whether it's whether it's golf or hunting or, or, or just walking around, like you can, you can feel what you're doing. Yeah. Sometimes walking down a hill, side hilling in boots, like you can feel yourself driving into that side it. of the mountain. I love what you're wild. saying. So when you know when, when I stand and I you know tap the floor and I try to think about what am I feeling? I actually yeah, you feel a little on the bottom of your foot, but what I'm really feeling is sort of the vibrations in my leg through your tip and into you. my knee. Yeah. And I think that's what you're tapping into is that, you know, the because it's directly connected to your skeleton. Uh, it's a part of you, and you're feeling the vibrations and the pressure and that feedback that goes into your bone. And that's what we talk about. We talk about this thing called osseoperception, which is a type of proprioception. In other words, feeling your body in space and knowing where you are, knowing, you know, knowing where the floor is and feeling, feeling the little things. All right, well, let's, let's take a look at yeah, your leg. Absolutely. All right. Looks looking good. So... The aperture looks really healthy. It's yeah. amazing. You ran 26 miles yesterday. Two days ago, yeah. And two days ago. And I mean, I don't see any swelling. Bend your knee. Bend out your knee. That's amazing. Got great motion. The aperture looks really, really healthy. When I do that, what do you feel? Just the vibration on the yeah. tip. Right. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, you feel everything's connected. That's awesome. Uh, can you show us how you take it on and off? Yeah. Yeah, show me how you take it on and off. Great. This looks great. So this is the end of the implant, as I'll show you on the x-ray. This is, this is called the dual cone, and this whole thing is what's called the abutment. Um, this, you know, you know all this stuff, but I want to just review this. There's a safety feature in this. Uh, this this actually two pieces, and if you torque it too much, this piece will break off. It's kind of like a ski bonding, and that will protect the implant and protect your bone and your leg. Uh, incidentally, I will tell you that we have not had any. Yeah, go ahead, put put that back on. We've had no fractures in uh, in the experience, and um, I've done a lot of tibias. I was the first surgeon to do a tibia osteointegration in the United States. Uh, we started about eight years ago now, and we have not had any fractures. Just a couple of reminders. Uh, you take your shower daily, you know, wash it with soap and water, just like, you, you know, nothing special. Avoid putting your fingers in the aperture to avoid any infections, but you really have, you've been good. We haven't really had any, any problems. I yep. love that. All right, I'm going to have you put your shoes back on. Yep. I'm going to watch you walk. Yep. I'm going to show you your x-rays and uh, we'll get you on your way. Perfect. Do it.
Mark, let me show you your x-rays from today. Okay. Um, they look amazing. I want to share that with you. So that's your femur bone. That's your tibia. This is your knee. And that's your implant, well integrated into bone. What you can see here is that the bone has completely grown into all these little nooks and crannies on the implant. It looks amazing. Really strong. That's the front view. That's the side view of the same thing. Beautiful. We got, look at that beautiful integration, osseointegration between your bone and the implant. And you may notice that there's all these little, um, if I blow it up, you may notice that there's all these little ridges on the implant. So there are, it's a roughened surface of titanium and the bone grows into it. Bone and titanium love each other. They, they grow into each other and it is literally connected. It is osseointegrated and it's extremely strong and that's why you can do what, you're, what you have been doing. So that's amazing, that has a great look. You're also transmitting load through your bone so this bone is getting loaded appropriately, so it looks really healthy. You're not getting any osteoporosis or osteopenia. All right, so uh, what I want to show you, Mark, it's always nice, you know, when you look back a little bit and sort of see what we've accomplished. So this is before your surgery in, in 2022, and this is a recent x-ray that we did. And so this really, you know, kind of shows, um, if we look here, you can see that's, that's you in a socket. You can see your alignment is not ideal, you know, from hip to ankle. You see how it's kind of going through the outside part of your knee. Uh, you can see how your knee is, your leg, your residual leg is kind of floating in that socket. And that's part of the problem. You know, you're, you don't have great control. And if you look here, now we have gone to a direct skeletal connection, which is a completely different situation. Your alignment looks amazing and you've got an osseointegration limb replacement. Now it's just, it's, it's very satisfying for a doctor to um, have obviously an impact for somebody, but when, when you, you, see, you get that patient who really appreciates it to such a high level, kind of takes it to the next level, and that's what you're doing. You're paying it forward. You're yeah. taking this and you are broadcasting it because you really believe in what it's done for you and yeah. you, want, you want to help other people. Yeah. If it wasn't for you, I would not be living this way. So I've had, like I said, I've had a lot of doctors. I want your name to be a household name. That means something to me. I had your name on my back for a reason. You didn't know I was putting it on my back. I didn't know. But I put it on my back because so I was like, this is the man. This is the city he practices medicine in. I want everybody to know his name. I want everyone to know his Osseo Integration HSS logo. That is so important to me that I, your name I, is on the top of Osseo Integration. I appreciate that you appreciate what I've done for you. Massive. And all the people that you're going to change the lives to, this is so early where we are right now. Yeah. It's only going to grow and it's going to change thousands of people's lives.